Welcome to Inspire, the show that tells you the story of how they did it so that you can do it too. And today we're joined by Coronation Street actor Sherry Lee Houston. I feel I can talk about it now because I feel I'm almost seven years in, I've proved I can do my job, so therefore I can prove, I can openly talk about being in pain. I was given, yeah. I disabled Lou as my dressing room and green room because the green room was upstairs. So they went, they came in and they just went, uh, we just thought we'd put a mat here for you. So if you want somewhere to lie down, it was next to the toilet. Sherry, thank you so much for joining us today. You have been in Coronation Street for seven years now. Seven years in February, yes. Has that flown by? Yes. <laughs> How has that become seven years? Do you know what I mean? I don't know. When you arrived on the cobbles, did you know that you were going to be staying for a period of time or were you kind of a temporary character that they made permanent? I was staying for six months. I was given um, two years at six months options, but I got renewed before I went on screen for my second six months, which was a good sign. Wow. Um, yeah, and then I'm just still there, which is amazing. Now you're part of the furniture. Yeah. How does it feel? Is it, I mean, because I know that you were a Corrie fan when you were a mm. child growing up, so now you're actually in the soap that you watched. How is, how is that? It's become normal now, which is really weird. But then the other day I was saying that to myself, and, I look, and then you look up and see the Coronation Street sign, or you're in the Rovers, or you turn and see that person, and you're like, it, it's normal, and it's my life, but it's still, pin, it's still a bit of a pinch me. And from kind of a, I guess, from an actor's point of view, I mean, that is one of the flagship shows of our nation. So, I mean, you must be quite proud to be in there and also in the forefront because your character has had some pretty juicy storylines. Mm. I know that things aren't exactly easy for you, all right? Not easy! You've got no idea! Look at me, Gary. Look, you've got no idea. Yeah, I'm very, very lucky. And also what's great is I think all my jobs before Corey hung on a disability, whereas it's a character, it's a person. It's, and that's what's really brilliant about what they do as well. As a child, you always knew that you wanted to be an actor. I was the annoying kid who stood up at, stood up at the front of class, do you know what I mean? Or yeah. put the assemblies on, then went to youth theatre, then went to drama school. And then ended up putting on my, because then that's when my disability kicked in was while I was at drama school. Um, and then I didn't get a job for five years, four years after drama school. So then I set up my own company and started doing it that way. So what is your disability? Is it EDS? Did yeah. I get that right? Ellis Danlos type three. And what is your disability then? Uh, basically all your sockets, bone sockets are like that. Mine are a bit like that. So they're a bit loose. So my bones can fall out at any point. But also that's hypermobility-ish. Um, but the EDS part is where your collagen, your connective tissue tears, so your muscles, tendons, ligaments, right. nerve endings all tear as you move. So after a busy week, I could have torn my whole skelet skeletical system, the really? whole thing, and both things will fall out. So the more you do, the more the bones fall out because the more tired you get, so that your muscles structure doesn't hold them in. That sounds incredibly painful. Yes. Yeah, it, yeah, it is. Yeah. It is, but I don't know. I haven't not known pain since I was 11. So I actually don't know what it's like to not be in agony. So I'm kind right. of a bit the other way. Do you know, yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's yeah. a bit, yeah, you have, to, you have to distract yourself a lot, I find. Have you turned up to work with dislocations? Yes, yes, Yeah. Regu we monthly, wow. weekly, yeah, rib out. Ribs take, ribs are the worst. Ribs take about three days to go back in other things I can clunk back in or it's just clunked out or it's caught nerves or things. So then those are two or three day injuries, but I've got so much better at knowing how to hold my body and my bones in. I don't tend to get longer injuries anymore ish. Do you know what I mean? They can be, they're shorter term. They're not like a six month in injury or something. Do you think if you weren't able to cope with the pain and you perhaps spoke about it more, do you think that could have maybe held you back in previous jobs. That's why I never spoke about it. I never actually told Corey till a year in because I've had so many jobs taken off. I've had a few jobs taken off me when they realised I was in pain. I know some people's assumptions are if you're in pain, you can't do that. Or let's not ask them to do that because that is going to hurt them. Whereas actually you need to be treated as somebody else because it's not like, yeah. say if you dislocated your knee, then yes, you need help because that's that period of time that injures, it, that needs to heal. But 
that's my body every single day. So that's what I deal with every single day. So you need to put that aside and be treated normally. So I, because I, all my acting jobs before that being like two, three months or a tour of four months. So after a year of Corrie and going to bed on a Friday and getting up on a Monday, because I'd torn everything, so it'd take me, I'd lose my weekends. Yeah. I then actually go, um, I can't do this anymore, but this is why. But then by then I proved I could do my job. Right. So and now I feel, it's only, I was talking to my partner about this, I feel I can talk about it now, because I feel I'm almost seven years in, I've proved I can do my job, so therefore I can prove, I can openly talk about being in pain. I mean, that's incredible. I mean, some people call in sick at work, don't they, because they've got man flu. I've never done that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I would but call in sick every day. That's my problem. So yeah, I can never yeah. call in sick. And Corey, sometimes, when I've had a couple of bad injuries, they've sort of gone go home. or And I've had to go, you have to ignore it and treat me differently because of that. Because you can't treat me like you treat other people because this happens too many times. If we go down that road, I Otherwise can't do my Otherwise you'd never job. be at work, Yeah, I guess. Before you were in Corey, uh, had you had a fair few knockbacks because of your... Disability? Yes. Well, the world's changing, finally-ish, but not very well, but better than it was. I mean, quite, yeah, I, I mean, I've had jobs taken off me when they realised I was a wheelchair user, even though it was on my CV, but because of my uh, you know, quality of credits, therefore I got offered auditions and they were like, oh, we've not read the CV properly. Oh, I don't think we can, it's insurance risk or it's a... Right. Um, I didn't get an agent, so I'd had 14 telecredits. Um, I used to do all, but well, I still, you know, mail out, mail out, mail out, because nobody take me on, nobody trusted. It's a catch twenty two, mm. and it still is a catch twenty two because until two thousand, when I went to drama school, you actually didn't have a legal right as a disabled person to higher education, <laughs> which only I came mean, in two thousand. That's kind of like which is insane. It's unbelievable, isn't it? I, yeah, you, you can't actually believe that that ever was. Sixteen years ago, it's all we've had. It. Your role on telly is unique but actually I was quite surprised that y there aren't that many people playing roles that suit their disability mm -hmm. so your character Izzy actually does have EDS yes. doesn't she that must help quite a lot because yeah. I can imagine trying to play somebody with another disability that you don't have a full understanding of could be quite tricky at times. Well, it's playing somebody else's access when you've already got your own access. So I'd, I think at first they'd wanted Izzy to be paralysed from a car crash. And I said, that'd be fine if I was playing it for two weeks, but I can't support my own body weight. I haven't got the right wheelchair for it. I can't use a manual wheelchair. I haven't got the strength. Um, so they just decided it'd be easier if Izzy had my disability. So therefore I'm not playing a disability. I'm not having, I'm just playing the character. Do you know what I mean? And it is that thing of, yeah, you can see that when you see able-bodied people play disabled people, they play, they're they focusing on playing the disability, not the character. Right. And th therefore, <laughs> you just see, you don't <laughs> really you spot see. Them? Can you yeah. spot them a mile off? Well, because they bump into things a lot. And <laughs> or yeah. you see a blind person staring too hard. Or, or, those are, or it's just like they've not developed the personality because it's not about the personality. They're, they're trying to play a, a, a disability that's not them. Whereas, actually, I don't believe that... I believe disabled people should play all roles, and until that happens, at least let us keep our own. No, I want to hear this. Yeah, and that is exactly the problem. You only hear what you want to hear. Meaning what exactly? Meaning they found you guilty. Yeah, and I'm dealing with it. No, you're not. Not even close. You, know, you could be going to prison. And all because you can't keep your mouth shut. Because I'm in the right. What was your life like before you were in a wheelchair? Because you got EDS at the age of... 11. 11. 11, yeah. So I'm assuming as a child, I was a you runner. Were, you were I a was, runner. Yeah, I was yeah. a runner and a swimmer, and I was in all the school teams. And then I slowly lost the ability to run, probably from the LA. I was still trying by about 13, and then I sort of stopped. You're probably still trying now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've built up to a kilometre swimming, though. I'm doing all right on really? that front, yeah. Okay. yeah. So life, I guess, was faster. Faster. Though that's probably why I have very fast wheelchairs, because I used to run everywhere. Yeah. So I quite like that wind in my hair feeling. Can you remember when your body started to change? I had quite a tricky journey in the fact that I wasn't believed by the doctors and therefore not by my family. So I only became vocal about it when I was 
probably 22, 23. I got diagnosed at 23, and then it was just like, because I think I thought I was slightly mad, because that's what the doctor said it was in my head. So I was like, but this really hurts. But they're saying it's, it's in my head, so this really hurts in my head. Mm -hmm. <laughs> is yeah. this, is, you know, am I mad? Am I, you know, it was really, it was quite a tricky time for me, and I wouldn't want anybody else to go through that in that respect. But I think a lot of people with my disability do, and still do, unfortunately. I want my fault I had a disability, do you know what I mean? I wasn't right. giving, always wanted to be an actor since I was about five, so I wasn't giving up my dream just because I didn't fit into the box. I mean, it took me 17 years to get there, and I had yeah. a hell of a lot of kicks in the teeth and knockbacks, but I never gave up. What was it like then when you were like a jobbing actor going to auditions a few years ago? What was kind of accessibility like then? As a disabled actor, there's not that many. Right. Which is what, it, it, I've run several courses and I just got ITV to do one last year and we're going to do two more now for audition te technique for disabled actors. Because you need to go, you need to have had about 10 to know how you do it. That could take five years if you're a disabled actor. True. So therefore you need to know what you're doing and doing it well. There wasn't that many of them, the auditions. Yeah, I did all right. I did all right with them. Um, there was a few that I came out and cried. Like I, I went all the way down to London. I went in and they went, show us your tricks. Uh, what, what tricks? Well, do a wheel spin. I was like, this is an electric, uh, do a, a wheelie. I was like, this is a heavy, not this chair. This is a heavy electric wheelchair. Yeah. It doesn't do wheelies. <laughs> oh, right. Uh, thank you very much. That's no good for us. I was given yeah. a disabled loo as my dressing room and green room because the green room was upstairs. So they went, they came in and they just went, uh, we just thought we'd put a mat here for you. So if you want somewhere to lie down, it was next to the toilet. Or I'd turn up places and the meeting would be up two flights of stairs. So, the, you know, and I know other friends who've gone up those stairs when and then been in bed for a few days because people don't think the world's changed an awful lot since yeah. I started. I mean, that seems... I mean, that, I guess, as you say, it's just a short time ago. Mm. But things are kind of moving on. But the more we do it and the more we're in there yeah. and we do our work well, the more changes will come. I guess, because I suppose, it, say, Coronation Street, if another disabled actor comes through the door, you've already bashed down those yes. barriers that Everybody's may ready. have been there. We're ready for them now. But yeah, yeah, you, 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 you're ready. <laughs> yeah. So, you, you know, you, you're helping pull the next person through. Yes, and people get over their fear. I think people have a lot of fear of getting saying something wrong or doing something wrong, so therefore they don't speak or they make a bit of a, you know. I remember once did something and there was a memo went round to every crew member. Um, the girl in the wheelchair really is in the wheelchair. <laughs> Oh, right. yeah, because, I because <laughs> most because able-bodied people play, play people yeah. with disabilities. So you right. know, so don't make a don't make a mistake. And people are going, so you really are in a wheelchair, you know? Or, yeah. Yes. You clearly have a lot of determination. Yeah, I'm one of those people. Who, you say no, and it's like, right, I'm going to figure out how I'm going to do this then. So yeah, and I yeah, I do, in a way, my knockbacks made me more determined, and because my knockbacks, you know. All my able-bodied peers from drama school were getting auditions and things I wasn't. So it was like, right, and so I wrote off more and I, you know, yeah. every time, but then by the time every, any disabled job came up, I'd immediately be contacted by the casting director because they already knew I existed. So, you know, right. things, it got easier. How can we change it on telly then? What would you like to see happen? More of us there. <laughs> Simple, just employers yeah. really, isn't it really? So what are the numbers at the moment and where really should they be? Uh, twenty percent apparently used to be thirteen, but I think that it's changed a lot. In we've had more war, we're much more of an aging population now. Uh, apparently, everybody, anybody over sixty-five, um, forty-five percent people have a disability. Twenty so twenty percent. I think it's thirteen percent of working age adults have got a disability. So there's mm. thirteen percent of us, and we're not on telly. You can name us. Somebody said the other day, if you can name all the disabled actors on telly, there's not enough because why should you be able to name them all? And do you think it's quite possible that in the next, I guess, five years that we could start to see more disabled actors on television? That'd be amazing. That w I mean, it started, I mean, it's, gosh, when I left drama school, there wasn't anybody, and I'd never thought I'd get a career on telly. Really? So, no, I didn't, I didn't think that was open to me. So if there were no disabled actors on television when you left drama school, 
what is it that inspired you? Because I was an actor. It wasn't my fault I had a disability. Do you know what I mean? I wasn't right. given, always wanted to be an actor since I was about five. So I wasn't giving up my dream just because I didn't fit into the box. I mean, when I finished drama school, I didn't even realise there was disability theatre. There's a whole sector of disabled theatre, which I did for quite a few years, and then I decided I couldn't do that anymore, and I had to refuse all those jobs, because otherwise I'd be keep kept in a certain section. When I think of your character in Coronation Street, I don't actually think about your disability. Mm. I think about the drugs. Um. <laughs> <laughs> because that was quite a big storyline yes. for yourself. Uh, and I know that you were doing it or in character for your disability, but I remember, oh my gosh, like, you know, she's in trouble with the police mm. kind of thing. Just like you would think about another character that was going through a storyline. Yes. So your character, I mean, it's a character within its own right, as it should be, as in you are a person, you're a character in Coronation Street. It is about your disability, but it's not about your disability at the same yeah, time. Yeah, she's that a mum who's got herself, she's exactly. trying to do something best for her kids and she's got herself and just stuck. What do you want to do in the future then? You're someone that's got a lot of passion. Do you see yourself going on to do more acting roles? Or do you want to step into the political arena? Because I know that you're quite passionate about campaigning as well. Yeah, I've sort of become an accidental activist. Okay. <laughs> it's my thing. <laughs> this is what my partner calls me. Because actually, I ended up talking at the Labour Party conference and I wrote a couple of articles which set this all off. But it was only because nobody else was. Right. And no politician was saying it. And it was like, hang on, nobody's telling them, everybody, what they're doing to us. And nobody's telling the world what they're doing to my community. So I'd be... I'm passionate about it because I don't believe people should be allowed to live like mm -hmm. that or be treated like that. But it's not my aim. My aim is an actor. I'm, you know, but I love Corrie. Yeah. I really love Corrie. I love my family. I love my stepkids. So I want to stay around and see them grow up. Really. Of course, yeah. What is your what's your like dream job then as an actor? Something that will put you to your risks and your depths, but as a different character. Yeah. I, quite, what, I what does, like to be so, a bit bondy yeah, so or what something does it, <laughs> like that. Something like completely they'd never yeah. let me do. You are starting a theatre project for yes. disabled people. Yes. Uh, tell us about that then, because that sounds really interesting. It started cause, um, because of the cuts. And then, because I used to do stuff years ago. I've always done stuff with kids. Um, and when, when I was between my acting work and stuff, and I ran my own company where we did stuff with kids as well. But um, I used to go into like disabled schools for the Easter holidays and we'd do a film or do a drama project. But what it got me to think was, well, if I did that for that generation, they could do it for the next generation. And we're going into the Lancasterian School, the main disabled school in Manchester. We're going to the development services where disabled kids from all over Manchester are going to have three or four weeks away from their family to make choices, make food choices, make conversation starters, all that sort of stuff. So we're going to go in there and we're also having a youth theatre at the Royal Exchange once a week. So then as our kids go through that system and get more confident, then we will teach the able-bodied youth theatres how to accommodate them, and they'll come and work with us first. So, yeah. everybody, so it sort of starts this network where we start infiltrating in. And then I'm going to start funding, want to get some funding, so any businesses out there, hello. Um. <laughs> <laughs> as any actor, disabled, able-bodied, you're in a really fortunate position, aren't you? Yes, I forget that. <laughs> I, I try to like switch my over and ignore that because it's a bit, you know. I mean, there's loads of people that are just trying to be an actor and mm. they, they never get anywhere. And here you are, you know, in a principal role. I mean, it took me 17 years to get there and I had yeah. a hell of a lot of kicks in the teeth and knockbacks, but I never gave up. And never. I think that's what you have to learn. I, yeah, I ran my own company, wrote, wrote, wrote do you know what I mean? Wrote to everybody, create my own work, do all that. You just don't give. If you're something you're passionate, why yeah. listen to somebody else who says you can't do it? You can do it in a different way. So, what would your advice be to people that may be watching this and have doubted themselves and perhaps couldn't see over the first wall? What would you say to them if they want to do the jobs that you're doing and become an actor, either in TV, theatre? I'd say trust yourself. I'd say we all feel like that. Allow yourself to feel like that and then help yourself get over that because you'll feel like that on the next step 
and on the next step and on the next it doesn't that doesn't go away but don't let it stand in your way and don't give up fight if somebody says no find a different way find a creative way don't expect people to give you the jobs bring bring your work to them show them what you can do don't sit and wait and that's definitely what you didn't do. No. You didn't sit and wait, did you? No. <laughs> you carried on. And you're still going 100 miles an hour. I know, I know. <laughs> and I keep having the doctor say, you've got to stop a bit more. And everybody else is like, yes. But my head keeps going up with ideas. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I've got a lot on. You're clearly someone that, that is inspirational. Not just as somebody who's in a wheelchair who is disabled, but just as a person in general. Oh, thank as you. part of this society, you've got a lot to contribute and you're... I, I think you'll continue to contribute because I can just see the passion mm. that is that is inside you that really does shine through. Do yeah. you actually see yourself as a role model? Because that's what you are. No, God, no, no. I just <laughs> I'm a bit shy. <laughs> are you getting when, embarrassed? Yeah, I go really embarrassed, very shy, and that's not. No, but you are. It, no, <laughs> not um. I don't see it like that because I think it's almost that thing of what you, it's like you're doing this or you're doing the thing that excites you or whatever. That's all it is, really. You're just doing your thing, aren't you? Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us. You've Thank you. got a truly inspirational story, and I can see that there's more things for you to come in the future. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs>